This is the Moto Guzzi V100 Mandelo S. It's brand new from Moto Guzzi, and they hope that this is gonna fly them 100 years into the future, celebrating 100 years of the past. Is this the future of Moto Guzzi? If it is, I think they're right on it, because this is incredible. But enough talking in the studio, let's get out on the road to ride this, because I was absolutely loving it. So let's go. <laughs> So you join me out here in the beautiful English countryside and we've got this, the beautiful Moto Guzzi V100 Mandelo S. Sorry, I just had to catch my breath there because this thing is absolutely stunning. Single-sided swing arm, yes please. I like the exhaust, only a small little thing. Most of it is kept underneath the bike. But as you can see from a sort of side profile, it just looks spectacular. In terms of colour options, you can go for this one in grey. You can go for a green and grey option where rather than black at the front or sort of blacky bluey colour, it's green and that's stunning. Honestly, so stunning. The way the bike just flows and just has such a nice like curb appeal really. It just looks honestly beautiful. I feel like the Italians could design a wheelie bin and they're going to make it look spectacular. You can get pannier mounts here. Well, you can get them there. They are here. They're built into the bike. Of course, if you get a tail tidy, you're gonna have to think about where this goes. So uh, aftermarket options may wanna include this if you wanna put your panniers on as well. The motor itself I'll talk about on the road because it's a, a big selling point. It's a new one for Motor Guzzi. They've put it as a liquid cooled transverse 90 degree V twin, 115 brake horsepower, 105 Newton meters of torque. Spectacular. Tilted forward five degrees, nice amount of leg room. My legs with my lanky body come up to about here. Nice and calm, you do get a bit of warmth from the cylinder heads, but that's no problem at all. Olin suspension front and rear, and on the S model, as you can see, it's electronic or semi-active as well. Mind the GoPro mount, which is in a very nice place, but uh, yeah, works nicely. You can set it all up in the modes and set the suspension to be a little bit firmer for a dynamic road, or you can set it to be a little bit more soft for a comfort feel on the road. 17 inch wheels front and rear, and all in, this thing is spectacular. I've not even mentioned the self-deploying wings. This goes up and down with a button on the dash. So let me just switch that on. You can flick through the menu, which the menu itself is so nice. Windshield goes up, put it into sport mode, but you can set it to go out in any, and the wings deploy. Road mode is really nice, but sport mode is hectic, I won't lie. Heated grips as well, tire pressure monitoring system, the MIA, uh, multimedia integration, voice control as well, which is very nice, and A and B mode on this S model. But I think we should uh, get on the road on this. So let's go. So yeah, this is a 15,750 pound bike in the S model. It's about 13,000 roughly for the non semi-active version. This comes with a quick shifter as well on the S model. And ultimately it is a bit of a premium price tag, but this bike is premium. I uh, have ridden it in the past out in Italy. Naturally, because it's a transverse V-twin, it sounds so, so nice. And when you throw the, uh, the throttle, the bike itself rocks left and right, which is always a bit of a fun feeling. But let's go. Not quite a nice start here on some uh, gravel, but the things you do for love, hey? I will just say as well, one thing that I am a bit annoyed with with this bike, not that it's really a big issue, the turning circle from the steering lock just isn't quite, quite there. It just feels a little bit lacking. But, it's no problem. Now this is in road mode and it absolutely flies. When you get into sport mode, Yeah, flick it into sport mode and it's even more aggressive. So Moto Guzzi are famed for their air-cooled motors. They made this one liquid-cooled. As I say, 115 brake horsepower, 105 newton meters of torque. And it just is so, so nice, so responsive. Sounds really good as well. And in terms of riding this on these sort of twisty roads, I'm right behind a car right now, which is less than ideal. 
hold off a little bit. It handles supremely well. Let's flick it into tour mode. See the uh, the wings deploy, which is a tad of a gimmick. They say that it reduces the aerodynamic drag by about 20%. I can't really say that it does too much myself, but it's hard to uh, it's hard to really tell because when you don't have them in, you wouldn't really notice if they are. You can change it in the modes to deploy at different speeds or just switch it off entirely if you want to. And as you can see, there's a dedicated mode button that allows you to just flick through as you ride, which is really nice. But about that motor, it's just so, so fun to work with. Let's do a little bit of a brake test here. Really good. Brembo's front and rear. And you've got yourself the Brembo master cylinder. Overall, the feel from the brakes is really nice. The ABS does kick in a little bit in the rear, but I've had no problem stopping on this at all. You know, in sport mode where the bike really opens up and becomes a different animal, it's just spot on. Now there is rumors that the um, V100 Mandelo engine, as you can see here, is gonna find its way into a Stelvio. So when we head over to Eichma in November, we'll be running over to the Moto Guzzi stand if they're there. I'm sure they are, it's an Italian mark isn't it and seeing if they've got a little stelvio under covers for us to, to gawp at and as i say i've ridden this before out in italy and the weather was less than ideal but even then it handled supremely well and it's one of my favorite bikes that i rode last year and i've ridden quite a few bikes now at this stage the clutch is really nice and light it's perfectly sized for my hands um wear a size large glove so if you're similar height to me in terms of comfort and feel of the bike Fit and feel of the bike is like second to none really. I really do just get on with this. It feels like a bit of a roadster, like a small touring roadster. And I did feature it in one of the top 10 spots for the best touring bikes that you can buy today. And the more I ride this, the more I just really love what it's doing. Even going over this uh, less than ideal road surface, it just feels like it glides over. Now in sport mode, I've put it so that the suspension is a little bit more firm. But if you set, say, tour into a softer suspension, you do feel that comfort. So if you're going maybe two up on a long tour, fully laden with luggage, you can set in the preload on the rear and dial it in for you and your passenger with your luggage on there. Set the suspension to a little bit softer to allow for a bit of movement and you're away. Honestly, this thing just is set up beautifully well. Now I open this as, uh, whether or not Moto Guzzi have set this bike up to be, you know, the way forward for them. And I'd argue that it is. Getting a bit sweaty talking about this bike. <laughs> you know, I've ridden the V85 TT, ridden the V7. We've even ridden the V7 Stone here at Bike Matters. And what Moto Guzzi do really well is create bikes that have a lot of feeling and a lot of character and kind of, kind of sounds like a cliche, but you sort of feel connected to the bike when you're riding it. And I certainly do know that when you jump on some bikes, you just don't have that same connection. But this one is definitely that case. Just opening up the throttle and you hear it sing. You get pops and bangs when you downshift. And the quick shifter itself, when you're high in the revs and up to speed, it's buttery smooth. As I say, when I rode this initially, out in Italy at the launch I did have a few gripes with the quick shifter because lower down in sort of first and second gears even at say 4,000 revs where I am now if you're in first and second you click up into second slash third and it just feels like there's an instant surge of power it doesn't really feel like it's tuned in but it's definitely a quick shifter that you want to use at high revs and especially with a V-twin with that instant power that pull from low down you're best used to just modulate the power with the clutch when you're at low speed and that's not even a negative really you just get used to it and that's just how you ride the bike now you've got a 17 litre tank on this which will be enough for around about 180 ish miles 
if I can see what we're averaging at the moment, we have reset it semi recently. Don't look at the max speed. Oops. So we're averaging 39.8 miles per gallon on our most recent jaunts, which isn't too bad. I think if you ride it sensibly and don't hoon about like I've been, then you probably get a better miles per gallon. Right, let's get a bit sensible now, Alex. Sixth gear. 60 miles an hour and we're floating at what just under 4,000 revs that's pretty good going in terms of seat height i believe this is an 810 mil seat and it's very comfortable you feel like you're sitting in the bike and the back of the the seat sort of hugs you in and it's a very comfortable place to be though the only negatives i can really say is that there's quite a few vibes in the uh foot pegs nothing that's going to spoil the ride by any means but it does feel a little bit vibey. So um, maybe just get some boots that have got more of a, a rubber sole to uh, remedy that. But it's nothing that really puts me off. I know some people really do not like it when their bike is creating vibrations, but at the same time, you've got to remember that you've got a uh, big 1042 cc V-twin rumbling away beneath you. So moving swiftly on, let's talk about the TFT and the dash and the switch gear as well, I guess. Might as well throw that in there as well. You can see here, tour mode that I'm currently riding in. Got rain mode as well, which is, a, still it's got power, but the twist of the throttle doesn't quite engage the motor enough. And that's exactly what you want in a, a rain mode, obviously, duh. But you've still got the power there if you really twist on. And if you ride it sensibly, the initial input through the ride-by-wire throttle is just spot on. It's impeccable for uh, instant sort of delivery of power. I'm sure you've ridden a bike in the past uh, that's got a twitchy throttle. I know I have. And it's always that first little bit of throttle that you put in. Rain mode just really sorts that out. Put it into sport mode. Felix, I, I might have accidentally slipped on the throttle there and, and did a, a few more over 62, so might need to... <laughs> but the thing is, even doing some um, overtaking manoeuvres there, you just feel comfortable and stable on the bike. It's, uh, it just, it's a work of art, honestly. I feel like I'm really singing its praises, but it's just, it handles impeccably well. front wheel does want to lift in sports mode you can change the traction control on the fly and i found you can do that with the uh, cruise control buttons which is quite interesting Let's see if we can do it here now if you mgct you flick up and down on the cruise control and you uh start changing the traction control management for the most part though one is the least intrusive elsewhere on the tft dash let's say you've got heated grips the indicators don't seem to want to self-cancel. I feel like I did read that they have self-canceling indicators on, but it just doesn't seem to want to do anything like that. The lighting on here is LED. You've got a really nice daytime running light at the front, which is an eagle. It's just nice little touches like that that just really set this bike apart. It feels really supremely well made. And just the way that it all is put together, you know, from the front fairing all the way to the rear just looks like one solid unit paintwork is really nicely finished and done i do wonder if the uh the little flaps here would be quite a pain in the ass to clean because you know if it rains and there's a little rain droplets in there you're gonna have to i don't know i don't know how you're gonna get really in there but there we go you could argue that having too much electronics on a bike sort of spoils the party a little bit but i don't think so at all hello fella you chicks did you have a camera i wonder if i'm gonna be in this video I'll have a little look at the uh, the modes because I don't... F well, let's see if I can do it now. Oh, if you press and hold, does it just go to the windshield regulation? The thing is you find out when you mess around with buttons. Oh, the heated grips as well, just as a quick point. You've got free step on those. And um, free doesn't feel nuclear. It just feels nice and warm and toasty. One is, you know, the sort of cold summer mornings when you want to be a little bit delicate and you want to take it easy. But let's see, if I now press and hold the mode button... It goes to the windshield regulation. Incredible. Love that. But overall, if you can't tell, I could well be in love with an Italian. Don't tell my girlfriend. Open my lid. 
So you press an old here, and then you've got a big old menu. A big old menu. You can uh, flick through down to Sport 1, 1 on M1 for the suspension. So the semi-active Olin's, of course, really nicely made. Is it? M1 might be more of soft. Anyway, road, one, two. You can all change this. And as you can see here, the MGCA is the wings. So they deploy at the moment on at 35 miles per hour. You can set that up all the way to say, well, 60. Or just turn them off or on at all times. So when you flick through onto them, they deploy. So you could say, oh, tour, I want them out at 20. And then it, if I get to 15, they go down. Cool, whatever. Moving through here, you've got your rain mode where the higher numbers mean it's more intrusive in terms of limiting. Hello. And one of the points that I did make, or did want to make, sorry. Nice little Kawasak. One of the points I did want to make as well is um, there's no custom mode here. So there's no option to have a dedicated custom mode where you can have, say, one on the engine and then four on the traction control and then the wings deploying at this and that. You have to just sacrifice one of these. So you could say you've got a sport road and a custom mode or something like that. Hello, fella. Yeah, all good, mate. Yeah, no, thank you. Just uh, filming a little review. Ah, lovely. Yeah, man, thank you. Appreciate you stopping, though, fella. Yeah, thank you. Love the biking community. All right, let's get back on the road. Lovely fellow. So the clutch works really nicely. You can get some pretty nice lean on this. And uh, the style is impeccable. I mean, it is a bit of a pricey bike. But you could go for the uh, the standard edition rather than the S model. So if you really wanted to, you just don't get the quick shifter and you don't get the tyre pressure management system. You don't get the phone integration, but you still get the motor and you still get the style. I'd potentially just go for the, the standard model and save a couple of grand. But one note I will make as well, as I'm just rattling through here. The um, fuel, we filled it up at the start of the day. We've done a few little jaunts and tours. We've probably done exactly 35 miles and our range has dropped down to 134 miles in the top right and you've lost two pips on the fuel bar. So um, yeah, naturally, I can't say I've been riding this extremely sensibly, but just be aware of that. But the TFT, and this is something that Felix really wanted to, uh, to throw into the review as well, the TFT itself is so nice. It's really smooth and it just seems to uh, just work impeccably well. The refresh rate, it feels like it's, you know, just really advanced. It's so smooth when you're clicking through. There's no delay. And if you're, uh, you're clicking through, it's all on one screen. So no matter what buttons you press, you're always going to be... Okay, we're going a little overtake. So ultimately, I do think that this is a bike that Moto Guzzi can safely and happily and confidently say is going to take them into the next 100 years. I mean, they celebrated their 100 years anniversary a couple of years ago. They were developing this bike in the meantime and they went basically back to the drawing board and started from scratch and said, right, we're known for our classic approach. Let's try to do something a little bit more modern. You know, there's some uh, nods towards the heritage models of Le Mans in the fairing and the tank and ultimately it's still very much a motor guzzy but it just also has that modern character and I'm sure that anyone seeing this on the road whether they're a bike fan or not is going to look at you and think yeah that's cool that is cool So the, <laughs> just playing about with the, uh, the screen there, the motor couldn't actually put the screen up because the wind resistance is too much. So it's not a very strong screen motor, but just do it when you're not moving at miles an hour and you'll be all right. <laughs> so I think this is a bang on machine for a 2023 buyer. I think it's going to do very well and it'll be interesting to see if Motor Guzzi put this new motor into use elsewhere if they make like maybe a little uh, dedicated adventure bike dedicated roadster something a little bit unique and different that'll be very interesting to see
Did I mention how nice this exhaust sounds? <laughs> Seriously. Whee! So this has been a Moto Guzzi V100 Mandel OS. It's the 15,750 pound beauty. Don't know if you can tell, but I absolutely love this thing. I think it's bang on. Deployable wings, semi-active suspension. Oh, it's got it all. Anyway, I'll leave it there for that one. If you want to check out another review video, maybe check out the Trace 9 GT Plus that I reviewed recently, or check out a top 10. They'll both be over there. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to stay up to date with the Bike Mats team, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.